Houston, we have a problem. We have a big problem. As of today, July 13th, there's still 250,000 or over 250,000 Houston residents without power. Even some with no water. And I might have been downplaying those numbers because it might be over 500,000 people still without lights in the greater Houston area. And I'm here to tell people, I'm here to tell people who are thinking about moving to Houston because Houston right now, and, it, and this has been going on for some decades, has been experiencing a population boom. A lot of people, especially black folks, love the idea of moving to Houston. For a lot of people right now, Houston is the new Atlanta. And I'm here to tell you, hold your horses. You might want to reconsider moving to Houston because now the cons are most definitely outweighing the pros, straight up. This hurricane barrel aftermath is just the beginning. Really is an understatement to say just the beginning because this has been going on for decades now. And with people, especially transplants, complaining about the infrastructure, complaining about the mishandling and the mismanagement of the Texas power grid, Centerpoint Energy, I think people are starting to realize that Houston is not what it's cracked up to be. That that affordability comes at a cost. Because like the old saying goes, you get what you pay for. And people are finding that out the hard way. See, I moved to Houston in 2009. So I'm, I'm familiar with Houston's history of hurricanes and violent weather, right? This is Texas. They pretty much all over, with the exception of maybe Austin, San Antonio area and whatnot. But before I moved to Houston in 2009, I was very aware of the situation that I was getting myself into. However, my naive, feeble mind at that time thought, well, that's just a South Houston thing. Or if you stay close to the to the coast, then you don't have to worry about hurricanes. You don't have to worry about constant flooding. Bullshit you. Bullshit me. See, this is <laughs> this is the chickens coming home to roost. Houston for decades and decades have had haphazard development all throughout. On top of the fact that it's the energy capitalist of the world. I know they consider themselves the energy capital, but it's the energy capitalist of the world. And when you really put two and two together, Houston being in the heart, the center of the energy industry, which creates this type of acceleration with global warming, then it makes sense why Houston is in the position that it's in today. See, what drew a lot of people to Houston was the low cost of living, access to world-class amenities at an affordable rate, the food, and the diversity, which all those things are still a pro. Don't get me wrong. I do like some things about Houston. I even love some things about Houston. You know, this is not a knock against the people per se, but the cons, the cons are starting to overtake, overthrow the pros. And you cannot put yourself in a position and fool yourself with Stockholm Central to think that things will get better. This is the tip of the iceberg. I'm telling you right now, this is the tip of the iceberg. These violent weather events are becoming not only more common, but becoming more intense. And apparently a lot of people didn't learn their lesson from Harvey. They didn't learn their lesson from the 2021 Texas freeze. And unfortunately, they won't learn their lesson with this category one hurricane barrel situation. Right now, politicians are pointing fingers at each other. You have electrical companies that are not holding themselves accountable for their lack of preparation. This shit is a mess. This is a mess, but this is to be expected. If you pay attention to the political landscape and you pay attention to the nature of politics, not only in Texas, but in America in general, then you should understand why the people will eventually lose out. And if you care about your quality of life, 
If you care about your children's future, you might want to reconsider moving here or even staying in Texas. See, me and my family, we lived in Atlanta. And a lot of people got a lot of shit to say about Atlanta. Oh, it's the land of the scammers. Oh, traffic is bad, which traffic is horrible in Houston. And yes, there's a lot of scammers in Houston, just like anywhere in America. A lot of people have a lot of shit to say about Atlanta. Atlanta this, Atlanta that. But one thing you don't have to constantly worry about in Atlanta compared to Houston is violent weather. Is inadequate infrastructure to the point where where neighborhoods and highways and freeways easily flood within 10, 20 minutes of heavy rainfall. You don't have to deal with that on a consistent basis like you do in Houston. And now, as I say this, people don't have water. They don't have power. And this is a major American city with no power, no running water. And you thinking about moving here because you think it's going to get better. You think things are going to change if you just vote your way out. I'm, I'm here to tell you. Politicians, red or blue, are compromised. This is a bipartisan issue. Yes, I understand that the conservative party has a lot of blame because they run Texas and they have pushed policies in place to make things worse, like privatizing electrical companies, corporations, which causes deregulation and causes more room for error. Yes, they have a whole lot of blame for this. But you don't think these Democrats, specifically in Houston, are compromised? You don't think they take donations from these energy corporations? You don't think they're taking these donations? I can tell you right now, if you are in Houston, Texas, go to a neighborhood in southeast Houston. It's called Manchester. Actually, this was a city. This was a city, an old city before it got annexed by the city of Houston. But go to Manchester. Study that, research that and go to this school that sits right across the street from a Valero plant. And you will see who the sponsors were, who founded and built a playground. And you will see all kinds of politicians, all kinds of energy companies, also developers who had a hand in building this playground for this school that sits right across from a Valero plant which causes all kinds of internal and external issues with human beings in close proximity to this plant but you'll see democrats who signed off on this school still being in proximity to these plants <laughs> matter of fact i'll go on record to say that oil and gas industry is so dominant in houston that it literally built the city the way the city is developed, the no zoning, I'm pretty sure oil and gas had a hand in all of that, whether indirectly or directly. The reason why Houston and Texas in general, but especially Houston is so car centric is due to oil and gas because oil and gas industries benefit more from a car centric city than one who relies on public transportation. This affects everything, y'all. This affects the environment. I know some people don't believe in global warming, but Houston is a prime example of that. And this is only going to get worse. Again, I'm telling you, if you are thinking about moving to Texas and Houston is on your list, dig deep, dig deep and say, is it really worth it? Because the cost of living is only getting higher. I, I think you might want to reconsider that. Hurricane season is not even over with yet. So we might be prepared for another hurricane. I know this might sound all doom and gloom, but the reality is Houston, we have a problem. Houston, you've been had a problem. And yeah, just buckle up and prepare for worse. And don't expect your politicians, your leaders to do right by you. Don't pray this shit away because it's not going to help. Don't vote. Don't vote away. If you want to vote, vote with your feet and move the fuck up out of Houston. With that said, don't forget to like and subscribe. Until next time, holla. Oh, 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 oh,